what an honor to be here in such a room. But I'm still struggling a little bit with what has been said so far. First, they tell me I'm a flower. It's the first time I am a keynote speaking flower. That's, that's, and then second, I have to put down my trousers, <laughs> which I think is very uncomfortable. So, so I'm here to spread some of the ideas. I'm very honored to be the keynote of this morning, but I'm here because you are here. I, I, I couldn't do without you, so I think we should start by giving yourself a massive applause, please. <laughs> please. And I might, I might be a shareholder, so sit tight, because they told me to explain what I do in 15 minutes, which is impossible. We're going to talk, we're going to talk about the weak economy, and we're going to talk about change and transition. This TEDx says, cities, environment, active. I think we should make it sustainability, transition, you. And this is what I will explain in the next 15 minutes. Ideas worth spreading, and my magic word is the word called we economy. Why am I doing this? Or maybe, why are you in this room? The first one is, I think that by the time I die, I'll probably be buried in a recyclable coffin. I, I, I assume, I think. But before it is at that moment, I want to bring a little change to the world. And I think you are sitting here because you implicitly or explicitly want to do exactly the same. We are here because we hold the power to change. And this change is taking place in a very different world. Look at this little picture. If you have been there, somebody is recognizing it, maybe. If you've been there, this is Rome. You're walking towards St. Peter's Square. In the back, in the back, is the castle, and this is this narrow street, and you walk towards a ceremony or a sermon or whatever. And this is how it looked in 2005. That's exactly, exactly 10 years ago. That is almost nothing. And this is how it looks now. Sorry, it's a technical thing. And this is how it looks now. <laughs> it means that without the Pope or François Hollande, or Barack Obama telling us, things have changed. So, basically, we are in a massive, complex change together. And sometimes we shoot each other in offices, and that's horrible. And sometimes we say horrible things, but we are in it together. In other words, we have started to live in a society, this is our society, where connections are the driver for change. And this is how our society looks. The density of connections offers horrible opportunities for all kinds of violence, but it also offers fantastic opportunities to make the change we want to make. So in everything, there's a dark side and an upper side. Because that time in the 70s when environment was about singing out loud and, and clapping and being happy and having green socks, it's over. If we want to realize sustainability today, we realize it because we live, we act, we breathe in this society. And this is where we have to make the difference. So get rid of simple answers. Stop putting nice little things in toilets so the water doesn't flush. It hardly, with all due respect, doesn't make a difference. The difference lies in something different. We need to work together on transition. We've come to a period in time where the model of society, as it was created by our parents, by our grandparents, and they did well after the Second World War, is becoming obsolete. I would even say, if I'm a little drunk, but it's too early, it becomes dangerously obsolete. It is outmoded. We need to work on transition. And you, we have been waiting for a long time that our governments were going to tell us what we needed to change. And you know what? They don't have any answers anymore. So all they do is moving back, more or less, spending less, 
Because we have been spending also in this country for 40 years much too much money. And that is what they call change. Well, I don't think that is what the change we should be working for. We should be working for a change that we play, we assemble, we discover together. There is no magic plan. There is no great construction. There is just us puzzling things together. And what do we need to puzzle together? We have to think about what kind of economy we want in the future. We need to think about what kind of business models do we need in the future? Do we want to have? And finally, we need to think about the value of money. And these three elements are the, the leading tag, are the basic elements of the talk I have this morning, and they all fit together. And if you say, gee, that sounds complex, then the answer is, right, it is complex, so stop fooling yourself by thinking that there are simple answers. First of all, we live in a society where we all want to move in that direction. So please bear in mind, you are not alone. Let's go through it. First of all, we come from a time where the economy was a linear economy, and you know what a linear economy is. You put commodities in, you make a product, trash out. And the average life cycle of a product is roughly nine months. Well, our parents designed that economy in the 50s, and I can tell you, given the growth of the population, given the depletion of resources and what have you, that, that I call this the downside of sustainability. We should stop and we should create a different economy. It's called the circular economy. And if you want to remember it, keep using what you have. Did you know we throw away almost 60% of the clothes made for us before we even wear it? Do you know that the average life cycle of a telephone is nine months? Just imagine what it means for resources. So we need to change the way we design and use. We also need to think much more about what the function is we need. Do we need a heating system or do we want to have heat? Do we want to have and own the suit or can we borrow it? I have a cradle-to-cradle -cradle suit which I don't own anymore. I find it fantastic that I can then the demonstration of this concept. Functionality means can we rent something that is functional in every aspect? Rent a chair, use the comfort of sitting and not having the chair. It changes and it's fundamental for the circular economy. We also should look for replacements. And if you want to understand what it is, it's called bio-based economy. But bio-based economy is very simple. Can we grow petrol on trees? Can we use insects in candy bars? That's bio-based economy. You're going to be talk, they're going to talk about it much more today. We also need to think about how we collaborate. Why the heck do we have all houses full of stuff and cars, one of the most pointless inventions ever made? Pointless. In 98%, it's standing still and it's costing you whatever, 200, 150, 300 euros. What a waste of time. What a waste of energy. Can't we redesign the concept? It's called car sharing. And it means we need to develop something called a sharing economy. It doesn't mean share your wife. So don't get me wrong. But we can share infrastructure, we can share highways, we could share bicycles. And how do we design the concept? And then we get something on the horizon which is difficult to understand. It's called the self-production 3D economy. It's emerging everywhere and it simply says, thou can print everything thou need. From hamburgers to pieces of plane, parts of your body and whatever. So it simply says, I like a new shirt tomorrow morning. Dear, could you print me a new shirt? And she says, of course, darling. That's the 3T print technology. In other words, we can recycle by doing so. And at the same time, while all this is true, there's something coming across. I showed you already the network. There is something called the Internet of Things, and it means we have arrived in a time where we can make incredible connections. You and I, we can make connections never imagined before with the speed of light and with a reach from here around the globe. And that capacity, ladies and gentlemen, that power, we have hardly started to discover. 
So this is where the first part of our transitional power is available. People start to discover their power. And they're not always necessarily sitting in offices. Maybe we should get rid of a little bit more offices. But they're sitting at home, at the kitchen table, and say, gee, let's start a cooperative for energy, or let's start a 3D print hub, or let's, let's do something. And they go out and they start organizing. And to organize, you need to have ideas and principles. So we have started working with a crowd-thinking group of people on what we call new business models. Business models are models that are made by people. It's important to say, and people start working together because they share principles. And it's important that if we move in this direction of a transition, that we share three principles. First of all, we work together. It's called, we are working collectively. And if we invest time and energy, we also share in the profit. The profit doesn't go to somewhere vague. No, we invest and we share. And finally, we do things without damaging the earth. So we have three principles. And the principles lead to a design. We need design, but not only classical design, not only where's the money design, but also where's the social design, who is included, how do we make a design, how, how does it fit in the neighborhood, how does it fit in the city. Design is more than finding your customer. That's not what we talk about. Design is how does it fit in life. And it leads to a value proposition, something that is a value. Because, ladies and gentlemen, the only reason we start moving is because we make value for ourselves and for others, and in any balance in between. And then we start rolling out the idea and we create a community. The magic word for me for the years to come is community building, not in the 17th meaning, but just building a community about your value proposition. You, me, I, the others. That is community. Community working to create together value. And in the end, of course, we measure what we have created. And if we want to have care, we create care. And if we want to have bread, we make bread. But we are becoming a self-organizing society driven by citizens. It's not evident, it's complex, and don't get me wrong, when we start doing this, conventional businesses will say, what are you doing? We are the leaders of the market. So don't forget, transition leads to all kinds of negative reactions. And remember one thing, when somebody's standing up and saying to you, but you can't do this because we have the market, then you're doing it right. <laughs> so that is a very positive element in your mind. And finally, it is also because we have to rethink the value of money. Some say the color of money is green. Fine, fine. But couldn't we think a little bit more about what value is? Yes, we need money. We are in a society that is driven by money. So it's naive, it's romantic to say, get rid of the money. That's naive. But we can think about the value of values. So I had my designer designed a little token, which is on the right. And it, it says value as if it's a dollar. So you've never seen this before. This is because we're here. And I think we should design a system, a banking system, where more than one value lives together in harmony. It's not evident <laughs> because you hear the real jigsaw is coming into play. Because if we want to work with different values at the same time, and you go to the bank and you say, can I speak to the bank manager? And you say, I would like to open a, a bank account for happiness. And my deposit is uh, 50. He will look at you and say, sorry, this is a bank. Or make it simpler. You go to the same bank or you go to a different bank. And you say, oh, good morning. Yes, I would like to open a time bank account. Sorry, a time bank account. And I would like to put 50 hours in my account. Where is the uh, guichet? Where is the place I can make my deposit? And get I, do I get an interest? Well, you know already, you will not get 
any answer to this question. So what will happen if you say, I like to deposit some money, some happiness, and some time? Then people will rudely ask security to take you out of the bank. So it mean, means we have to put money in the bank, because there's nothing against money. Money is a handy tool, but we have to think about if we if we have money, and there are many people in this society that don't have money, can we make a society where more than money counts? And we shouldn't damage the earth. In other words, we should create an economy where people are engaged, where we don't waste materials. All this is not easy. The economy, the fact that we have new business models, and that we talk about hybrid banking, is complex. So, one more time, don't fool yourself around. It is complex to get there. It means if I dream at night, I try to sleep, but if I dream at night, and I dream during daytime with my eyes wide open, I know that we should really engage in this transition. Please forget that our governments will do it. If it happens, it happens because you and me, together with all other kinds of constituents, will make that change. I am in the center of that change, not for the I of I, but I'm part of it. And you are at the same time part of what we do together. And it means basically that if you and I join forces, if we work towards the economy, if we start developing new business models, if we think about hybrid banking, we start to make a movement. And that's why you're here today, because you want to be part of that movement. And don't think it should be big. I think the time of big is over. I think it should be small. It should be in your street. It should be with your neighbors. It should be whatever. It should be reachable for you. It should be actionable for you. It should be you doing things with your neighbor. That is the power of what we can do. And that, for me, ladies and gentlemen, is the core of the economy. Thank you very much and have a fantastic day. <laughs>